Hello everyone, we're back in my rather messy testing world for, I guess, kind of more a showcase than a tutorial. I suppose it's a tutorial. Now, if you know anything about defragmentation in real computer systems, it's where as files get moved around, deleted, and stuff, because when you save files onto a drive, obviously they save on it in order. If you delete files, then the ones that were created after it don't get moved into the space, it doesn't shift everything along, so you get holes. And then newer stuff gets saved into those holes, so you end up with newer stuff that's on the disk before older stuff, and it's and it's fragmented, so hence fragmentation. And defragmentation is a process of moving everything around, making it contiguous, so it takes less space on the drive. And if you're familiar with applied energistics ME networks, you'll know that the same thing happens with them. As you take items out and put them back in, it all gets messed up, it takes up more space on your disks. And so defragmentation is really useful for ME systems. And the block you can use to do it is the I.O. port, because that takes everything that's on a drive and moves it onto other drives on the system. The trick is doing it automatically. Now I've only seen one tutorial on this, really. I've, I've looked around and I've only really seen one thing. And it was a little... a little overcomplicated, I think. I don't know whether it used mechanics that were useful at the time, which you couldn't do things that I've done with my design that I've got now at the time, I don't know, but it involved things like an ME chest that uh, empties ones go into, and they get fed back, yeah. So I tried to do something based on that, and that was pretty rubbish. And then I came up with this, which basically you have all the disks in one drive, you use this flip-flop, and they'll all move into the other drive. That wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um, then I came up with this, which I was quite pleased with. So what this does is you have one more drive in the system, uh, disk, one more disk in the system there's room for in the drives, and that goes in the hopper. When you flip that, this hopper locks, so the one that's in there stays in there. These all get pulled out, go into this chest. That hopper's locked so they don't go into the IO port. Then when you flip it back, the one that's in there will immediately go into there, and they'll start feeding through the IO port, and it'll start filling up from the one that's already there. And then the last one to come through will go into the hopper because this is a dense item duct and it's reset. So that worked pretty well. The problem with this is expansion. You pretty much have to have these in a line, otherwise it gets stupidly unwieldy and then you just get a huge line of drives and it's horrible. Um, this was an attempt at compacting it a little bit, so we've got the block there to lock the hopper and so on. But ultimately it has much the same problem. So then I started looking at secondary ME systems, and this is what I came up with. So if you've seen my Twitter, I've made a post that has a picture of this, which is why this is green screen, so I can get a clean shot of it. Um, and this is really quite good. It's quite simple. You just have your main ME system, which is the one you want to defragment. All your drives. You have these fuzzy storage buses connected into this, which are set with the 1K storage in this case, but you'd have whatever combination of storage disks you have, you just set those to store them. This needs to be set on match any for all of those. And these do have to be fuzzy because of that match any. So you have all your disks in there. And then on the back of this you have a second ME network. These are fuzzy import buses again set to the storage disks, fuzzy match any. We have a dark cable here, which is a cable that breaks connection when it doesn't have a redstone signal. This goes into a second ME controller, and this is literally the only ME peripheral on the network. Because these I.O. ports, I suppose these are peripherals, but these I.O. ports are part of the main network. So all this has is these two fuzzy storage buses, which are basically the same as these ones. It does the same thing, it puts them to the storage, uh, the I.O. ports. And then here we have the I.O. ports have hoppers underneath, which go into a chest, which is just a buffer, so there's room for all the disks. And then that's a basic import burst, another dark cable, which is on the inverse signal to this one. And then that goes back into there. Now, the one thing you need to bear in mind is that these have storage for six slots. So you need as, at least as many I.O. ports as you have disks. These have ten. So let's say you had six drives, that would be 60 disks, you'd need ten I.O. ports. Okay, there's just a few notes I wanted to add on this point. Um, rather than messing about having cap on screen captions or putting things in the description, I just recorded another video segment and inserted it. So, 
you don't necessarily need as many IO ports. It's better if you have more because it'll process faster, but um, if you do something like this, you can have hoppers going into the IO ports, then you have hoppers above that, which is a single line of hoppers coming from a chest, and you can just store stuff in the chest. That should also work. Um, another thing you can do is use item ducts. So then, you could move the chest down there. And have a... have this powered. And I think to bear in mind with that is you need to not power the hopper with whatever you're powering that with, so just be careful of that. And then you can just... Uh, Put your storage bus there. So that should also work. And it'll fill those up as it can. Um, so yeah, that might be a bit easier than having tons of IO ports. If you do that, then the point of having more IO ports is just to have it process faster. Um, so yeah, that's just something to bear in mind for that. But what you do is you flip this. There we go, took a moment. So that's now active, so it's imported those into there, it's put them into the IO ports, they've been processed, it's gone in there, and you flip that back, that dark cable opens up, it's not shown because my, I've got a rendering error, but that's then pulled out of there and it goes straight back into here. Now I'm not certain that this is perfect, I've done some testing with it and it does seem to work well, I haven't done any testing with different combinations of drive sizes, disk sizes, I keep calling them drives, these are drives. Um, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work, but I haven't thoroughly tested that. Um, but it does seem to work quite well, and the beauty of this is it's a lot more flexible on how you structure it. For example, you can do something like this, which has 16 drives, and they're packed into this area, that's pretty neat. And this isn't taking up a huge amount of room, all things considered. And I haven't built this especially tidily. So, you've got a lot of flexibility. This is about as compact as I can make it. This has got three drives, so it's actually not got enough IO ports for that. This is about as compact as I can make the thing. So that's pretty compact, and this is the switch for it. But yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. It's pretty simple to build. Just bear in mind, everything is fuzzy. Everything has the um, disks in there, that Jenny, that's crucial. I don't think the storage priority matters at all unless you want to make these have priorities, uh, decreasing priority along there or something, just to make sure. But with it coming along there, it should do that anyway. So, uh, yeah. Another thing I want to comment on is how this works in terms of processing. So I think what it does is, because these pull out relatively slowly, it starts processing these before these are all gone. Because if there were no drives in here and it tried to process, it wouldn't be able to. And I don't think it'll necessarily put an empty disk straight through. And even if it did, then that empty disk wouldn't go into here. So, I guess it's kind of important to have a bit of a throttle on this. And in that regard, this might help. Because it means that, um, is that you might not even need a storage buffer here. Because if you think about it, if you have that, then it can't export while there's a full, which means it can't import more. But as long as this is still switched, it's not putting new drives in here. So you'll get ones in here that are empty, and they'll now empty into the ones that are still in the system. And then they'll go in there, and then they'll be ruined. And it'll eventually it'll pull all these out, and the ones that it pulls out later will be fuller. But that means that those fuller ones will then go in here, and then when you do that, that'll empty out. Um, oh yeah, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. These need to be set on move to output when empty. Not when work is done, but when empty. Um, so then it'll import some, hopefully, it should do. If not, then you might have to fiddle with the settings a bit. And then because it can put empty ones in here, then the ones in here that are full will then go through. If you do it like that, I'm not sure it'll necessarily work perfectly on a first... Uh, run of the defrag, 
I'm not even 100% certain it'll always work perfectly as I did it before, but in any case it should only take a couple of defrags and it should work, so that's just something worth bearing in mind. Okay, so I decided to just run a test with this, because I want to know whether it does work perfectly. Um, so that's on 1k storage my channel, 1k storage my channel. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. That one needs setting, that one needs setting because I've moved those. So let's just grab a disk. Doesn't matter, it's got some on it because my channel. And my channel. Right, so these will fill it with different amounts. Let's give it a go. And another thing I didn't explicitly mention earlier is that you wait until these are all gone before you switch that back. It's going a bit slowly. More IO ports would speed it up, because we've got more places to put them. That does seem to be working fairly well. This should be filling up with some empties. Yeah. And I guess that can't import anymore at the moment. Let's do that. So, strictly speaking, it is defragmenting, although we've still got some full drives left here. You can rearrange those manually. But that appears to work. So, that's full, that's full, that's full, that's got some in it. And then these should all be empty. That's a leftover full one. Empty, 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 leftover full ones. And then these should all be empty. Yep, so it does, it works absolutely perfectly. The only slight downside is these being left here. Perhaps another defrag run will clear that. If you find you're having that problem, just put more ports in, I guess. Yeah, you're getting some left, but it's not a big deal. So yeah, it does work absolutely perfectly. So that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Just thought I'd get that tested. One last thing to point out, if you want to light it out like this, um, that dark cable is a normal ME cable. That's a different colour from this, otherwise it would join to it. Now the way you do this, if you've got a peripheral, because normally peripherals can't be coloured, but if you get a coloured ME cable and you place it directly on the peripheral, it will then colour that peripheral. If you try and connect a peripheral to a coloured thing, if it's facing then it will do it, but um, for instance if I put this here, that's joined onto there and it hasn't coloured it, so what you'd then have to do is put another cable on directly like that, so that's just something worth mentioning. So yeah, that's just a different colour so it doesn't join up there because the fact that it's got the dark cable here is necessary, and then the reason this dark cable is a normal uncoloured ME cable is so that it can join together two different coloured cables. I'm pretty sure it works perfectly. I'd have to do a little more testing to be certain, but I did want to do this because I think it's quite an interesting and useful thing to have out there. Because I haven't really seen that much in the way of great defrag designs, and it's something that's really quite important for ME systems. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you think it's useful, which I think it's extremely useful, then remember to leave a like. If you want to see more, then subscribe to my channel. Uh, share, favourite and comment, it all helps. And uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.